Hello lettering friends, I'm Sarah from Einstein Insights and in this video I am going to compare different paper for brush lettering. A while ago I did a video with the best paper for brush lettering and that video still is the best paper that I think works, but there is a lot of paper out there. So in this video I'm going to compare several different options that you have. So the reason why paper is important with brush lettering is because you don't want to fray your brush pens. To keep your brush pens nice, you want something really smooth. When I started, I used some of my brush pens on just regular paper and they frayed very quickly. So that is what we want to avoid. The other thing is if you have really smooth paper, how well is that paper going to blend with your brush pens since we need a lot of ink and a lot of liquid to be able to blend those pens. So I'll show you all of that. First of all, the paper that I use and love and that you see me using all the time in basically all of my videos, this is HP Premium 32 paper. I recommend this as the number one paper if you're just getting started or if you just want some extra practice paper. This comes in 500 sheets and it's very inexpensive for that. So this is definitely the most budget friendly of all of the papers that I'm going to show you. And then here's a little overview of the other paper options that you're going to see in this video. First, there's Bristol smooth paper and I'm gonna compare the Canson and Strathmore in both of them are 100 pound and I got a lot of people who recommended the Strathmore Bristol, so I decided I needed to buy it to try it out. And next, I'm going to show you marker paper from Strathmore and then Canson. The Strathmore is 50 pound and the Canson is only 18 pound, so both of them are very smooth, but the Canson will be a lot thinner paper. Next is a Rhodia pad. I have two of them. The white one that I have is older and I've been using it forever. This is nice if you just want a pretty inexpensive notepad. My white one is graph paper. My black one is dot paper. So you can get all different kinds, all different sizes even, and they're really smooth paper. And next I wanted to show you a couple of notebooks that I have if you like the hardbound book. This first one is just from Michaels. It's like $5 or something and the paper is pretty thin. So I don't talk about it a lot because it's not something that I would recommend, but I do use it to do the alphabet in initial review in some of my brush pen videos. And then Clever Fox sent me this dotted notebook. They also do planners and you can kind of customize what's inside your notebook. They sent it to me and so I'm going to add it here, seeing if it is any better than just my $5 Michaels notebook. And lastly, I'm going to show you some watercolor paper because for me, when it comes to blending, I prefer to blend on watercolor paper even though you shouldn't use the brush pen on the thick, rough watercolor paper. I normally find a way around this so that I can still get the look of the really pretty watercolor blends without fraying my brush pens. The one I use all the time is just the Canson watercolor cold press, 140 pound. And then I also like mixed media Canson paper. It's 98 pound. It's a little bit thinner and a little bit smoother for certain things. And then I got some requests to try out hot press watercolor paper to see if that is something that could work because hot press means that it's a little bit smoother than cold press. So I will show you the results of all of those. First, let me show you with HP Premium 32 paper. This paper does not blend well. It's great for practice, but it does not blend well. The one way that you can blend and you can blend on any paper this way is by picking up some of the ink with your brush pen so you're not actually blending directly on the paper. And here's what it would look like if you try to blend by putting the color on top of another color and then you try to drag the ink but it sits right into the paper and it won't, you can't pull any of the color and it also tears up the paper quite a bit. As you can see we need another option. 
So with Strathmore Bristol paper, this one, I tried the same thing with pulling the ink and you can actually pull the ink. So the ink sits on top of the paper a little bit longer than with HP Premium. On the B, I'm blending by just using the two different colors and pulling the ink with each other. So that's gonna be a much darker looking blend. And then for the rest of the letters, I'm gonna use the blender pen. There are several different brands of pens that have a blender pen. I'm using Tombow brush pens, and you can see the blender pen helps to just pull that ink in order to blend it out a little bit. So this definitely did work better than the HP Premium, but it did tear the paper very slightly. It's probably not noticeable enough to see on camera. Overall, this paper is a great option for a final piece because it is thick. So this is probably not practice paper as much because it's a little more expensive, but it would be great for a final piece. It's something that would last a long time and you could feel good about giving it to someone. It would feel very professional. So then I decided to try it with Karen markers. They are super juicy and they honestly probably didn't even need much blending because there is so much ink and it was good with the Strathmore Bristol paper because I could see that the ink was sitting on top of the paper before drying. So I was pretty impressed. However, I did use the blender pen, which adds even more ink and that did cause it to tear a little bit. So it looks fine in the picture, but in real life, it kind of has a weird texture. So then I decided to try it with water, with a water brush to just see if it would work because normally you need paper that can allow for more water to sit in it. But I was pleasantly surprised it worked and it was my favorite method. It did not tear the paper. It warped the paper very slightly, but it wasn't that noticeable. So I'll just tell you right here of all of the combinations of blending and paper that I did, this one was my favorite. Strathmore Bristol blending with a water brush. Next, I tried Canson Bristol paper, and this one didn't feel as smooth as the Strathmore Bristol paper, even though they both say they're Bristol smooth paper. And even though they were the same weight, the Canson was tearing a little bit more than the Strathmore. But when I tried the technique with the water brush, it did pretty well. I feel like the ink didn't sit as nicely into the paper, so the final look doesn't look as nice as with Strathmore, but it did work. I would choose Strathmore over Canson, even though this one did work. But if all you're doing is a final piece, this paper would look great. This one still is really thick, looks really professional, as long as you don't have too much blending. Moving on to Strathmore marker paper. This is not as thick as Bristol paper, but I'd say it's maybe even smoother. The Strathmore one is thick enough that it still would feel pretty professional for a final piece. The blending was just okay. I was surprised that it worked with the water brush since it is a little bit thinner. It didn't bleed through the paper. So this one's not my first choice, but it is a good option. In comparison to Canson marker paper, this paper, to be honest, feels like a step up from tracing paper. So I'm not sure why someone would spend this much money for something that can't be a professional piece because it's so thin. It's basically just expensive practice paper, but it is very smooth. It would work great for her brush pens. It definitely would not fray them. For blending, I didn't think it would do much, but surprisingly, it actually did work with the water brush. Because this paper is so thin, it does bleed through slightly. So this paper is probably just for practice paper. Next with the Rhodia pad, I think these are great. If you want a notebook, a great practice notebook, they come in all different types. So you can definitely get the size that you want. They're not too expensive. They're obviously more expensive than buying a ream of paper, 
but they're not too much for having a practice notebook. The paper isn't too thin, so only in the spot where I blended did it kind of bleed through. And it doesn't blend, so it's kind of like HP Premium in that way. But I do think these are so great if you want a practice notebook, you like having all of your sheets together, and if you want to practice with a dotted sheet first so that you can get your lines straight, this is definitely a good option. Next with the hardbound books. So the black one, like I said, was just $5. I found it at Michael's and you can see that the ink shows through quite a bit because the papers are so thin. I bought it, so now I'm using it and it works okay for what I'm doing with it, but I wouldn't say that it is the greatest for lettering. As for the Clever Fox, it comes with some stickers. So if you wanted to use it as a bullet journal, which I don't use, so I don't use the stickers, it has page numbers, which I thought was really nice. So this one's probably not for practicing brush lettering, but it would be good if you want to maybe do your bullet journal here with brush pens. The paper was pretty smooth. I wouldn't say it's as smooth as Bristol paper, but it is smooth enough that I don't think that it will fray the brush pens. So this is probably more if you want a notebook that you can keep your nice pieces in it. Or if you do bullet journaling, that would work too. And these are the only notebooks that I have since I don't do bullet journaling. So I don't have anything else to compare it to. This is just going off of my first impressions of this book. And lastly, with watercolor paper, first, just the Canson that I always use. I use a water brush and dip it onto the brush pen so that I don't have to use the brush pen itself on the watercolor paper. And this works really well. I've done a lot using this technique, and I even have a Skillshare class about it, which I will link to below. I love doing the rainbow watercolor background, and instead of watercolor just using my brush pens. It works with any water-based brush pen. You can see with this Canson watercolor paper there is some nice texture. I love that look. That's why I use this paper the most. This is more inexpensive paper than a lot of other watercolor paper, but it's good enough quality for the things that I do with it. It is rough and will fray your brush pens, but I just love the texture that you can get with blending. Next, with mixed media paper, this is a little bit smoother than watercolor paper, but it is thinner, so you can't use as much water in blending. But it does work well for something simple. I like to use it when I don't need as much of the textured look as with the watercolor paper. And I like to use the fine tip of like Tombow dual brush pens or other dual tip pens that are water-based because then you can lay the ink directly on the paper to blend it. Even though mixed media paper is a little bit smoother than watercolor paper, it is still rough, so it would still eventually fray your brush pens. Lastly, I was really excited to try out hot press watercolor paper because I've never tried it before, and it is smoother than cold press, the first watercolor paper I showed you, but it still does get some good watercolor texture, though it's not quite as textured as the regular watercolor paper, but I did like it. It was good quality. It's smoother, but I feel like it's probably the smoothness of mixed media paper. It's not smooth enough as like Bristol paper that I was using in the beginning of this video. But you can see that I am using my Karen markers on this paper because they are more durable brush pens, but they will eventually fray when using them on rough paper. They just will last a lot longer than other brush pens being used on watercolor paper. So you just have to decide what you want to use your pens for. Maybe you're okay with some of your pens getting frayed if you're only using them on watercolor paper. Or maybe you will never use them on watercolor paper and you want to blend in the ways that I showed you at the beginning of this video. 
I hope this video gave you some options so you could see what you want to do. Let me know in the comments below if there are any other papers that you have that you love that I didn't use, or let me know which paper here you want to use first. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and I will see you next time.